In this GAP video, we aim to address standardised procedures, in particular the standard overhead join, its importance and how it should be applied. To demonstrate this, the CAA team went to Pukaki in the central South Island and across two visits experienced the extremes of South Island weather. We utilised the left and right hand patterns Pukaki has to offer in unattended airspace and relative solitude. We were met by South Canterbury Aero Club CFI Aaron Pearce, who explains to us the importance of standardised procedures. Standardised procedures ensure that we're all doing the same thing. It makes us all predictable to each other. Predictability is really helpful when it comes to new pilots, to our itinerant pilots and to our pilots that only fly every weekend, every now and then. It aids with the traffic flow and it helps our sequencing. The standard procedures are also our go-to in an emergency, be it in controlled airspace or in Class G. Also, keep in mind in New Zealand we do have Nordo aircraft, so standard procedures are our only way to separate, spot, the aircraft that aren't transmitting on the radio. How many of you have joined the circuit pattern at an unattended aerodrome only to be surprised by someone operating outside the procedure in the AIP? Within New Zealand over a two-year period, there have been 153 occurrences reported within the circuit. 98 of these occurrences resulted in aircraft taking some form of avoiding action to prevent a collision with another aircraft. Within these reported events, there are a number of common factors, including flying the standard overhead join incorrectly, joining non-standard, not conducting an effective lookout, and poor situational awareness. Use of non-standard procedures can also be attributed to fatal mid-air accidents. As part of your pre-flight planning, you should factor in any operational considerations at your destination aerodrome, whether it is your home airfield or another location. Ensure you're aware of any airspace boundaries or limits, how to enter, and when radio calls may be timed. For this, there may be visual reporting points or prominent landmarks that can assist. Also think about areas of higher density traffic and where other aircraft may be executing the same flight path as they vacate or join a circuit pattern. Read the NOTAMs and check the AIP supplements. These may give indications of activity which may prevent an overhead join, such as winch-launched gliders operating on the aerodrome. In New Zealand, there are often occurrences attributed to pilots not being aware of conditions that are outlined in NOTAMs. Have a read of the aerodrome plate and become familiar with the circuit layout. Take note of radio frequencies and circuit directions and heights. Perhaps write down the overhead join heights. There may also be information when not to join overhead, such as during parachute operations or locally based agricultural activity. Use the image of the aerodrome to create a picture of what to expect, how the runways are lined and where the wind socks are. Use the VNC and aerodrome plate to apply where the weather may come from, forecast wind and how the aerodrome is aligned in terms of direction on the VNC. Also think about where other traffic may join from and where to look for that traffic both in and out of the circuit. With the pre-flight all sorted, it's time to get flying. Approaching the aerodrome, we should start to apply our pre-flight planning. Ensure you have only the information you need for the procedure. Keep clutter down. Consider your pre-landing checks early. Approximately 10 nautical miles from the aerodrome, make a call to local traffic. Booking traffic, Echo Romeo Whiskey, 10 east of the field, 3,500 joining. We're looking for indicators near the aerodrome as we come inbound that confirm the wind that we should already be aware of. So using the indicators like things like ponds, irrigation ponds are fantastic, lakes, uh, if you've got them, smoke, dust, tussock, even cloud shadows can help, but be a little bit careful of those because that's your upper wind. Once we've got our wind direction relatively sorted out, we want to sort ourselves out in terms of our chart. So our chart's telling us that our elevation for our aerodrome is 1,500 feet. So that means our overhead height is going to be 1,500 feet above the published elevation height. So we're going to be looking at 3,100 feet for our overhead joint. Then we want to sort ourselves out a radio call. Let any traffic in the circuit area know that we're inbound to join. So where we are at the moment is we're around about here on this side of the Pukeki River and we can use our thumb to measure a rough distance. That's about five miles. So we're five miles east of the field. 
Three Kaki traffic. Echo Romeo Whiskey is five to the east of the field, 3,400 feet, descending to join. I'm going to orientate my chart with the indicator to the north. That way, I'm looking out the front window as I'm looking at my chart. We can see on our chart that runway 15 is a left circuit. That's standard, but if we ever look at 33, it's got an arrow that indicates a right circuit. That means that both our circuits are on the eastern side of the aerodrome, making the western side our non-traffic side. We're going to approach with the aerodrome out my left so I can see the wind socks. The wind socks are indicated by the black arrows on the chart. As we're coming into the circuit area, we're keeping our eyes up and outside. Now we're going to be overflying the downwind. So if there's any circuit traffic, it's going to pass underneath us. That's why it's so important to maintain our 500 foot above the downwind altitude. Looking at the early downwind for any traffic, the mid downwind, and the late downwind. Looking for any joining traffic on the horizon as well. Pukaki traffic. Echo Romeo Whiskey is overhead, descending to join 1-5. We want to maximise our wings level time. That way, the wing's not in our way, and we can see any traffic. As we approach the aerodrome, I can feel a fair bit of drift from the south. Now, looking at the wind socks, they're confirming for me that it is a southerly as well. So we're going to set up for runway 1-5. We're going to descend on the non-traffic side come around, cross the upland threshold before turning downwind. At that point, it becomes a normal circuit. Now before we turn into wind, we're going to give ourselves the same amount of spacing on this side as we would for our downwind spacing. Now ideally, we want to be crossing the upwind threshold of the runway and at circuit height in level flight. So managing our height loss on the non-traffic side. We're going to fly out until we've got the correct downwind spacing, turn onto the downwind, make our downwind call, and it becomes a normal circuit like everyone's practiced. The standard overhead join is a standard procedure. It gives us the ability to get overhead the aerodrome at 500 foot separation from any existing circuit traffic or circuit. We can then gather our information. We can see that the wind is what we thought it was going to be doing, that we're going to use the runway that we thought we were going to use. It also gives us the chance to spot any circuit traffic, figure out the established circuit. Maybe one of the runways has been closed, there might be a wide X out there, there might be a mower out there, but being overhead the field looking down with 500 foot separation is the safest way for us to get ourselves into the existing circuit. If you join the overhead pattern and discover the circuit to use as right hand, you may need to change the overhead pattern. So we're approaching the aerodrome without the left side of the aircraft so I can see the wind socks and I've anticipated a left circuit using the wind indicators around me. But as I look down on the wind socks, I can see that it's actually 3-3, which is a right circuit. We're giving ourselves space to reposition to descend the aircraft for the right joint. In this depiction, once Aaron has determined the circuit is right hand, he positions to fly clear of the overhead and keeping a good lookout, conducts a turn with the angle of bank not exceeding that used in any circuit. This positions the aircraft into a right hand pattern. The way in which you position will depend on the traffic and circumstances of the day. Now that we're on the non traffic side, we can reduce power, start a descent, maximising wind's level time as it allows us a better look out with the wings up and out of the way, especially on a highway. Looking for any joining traffic as well, that's joining directly onto any circuit leg. Once we make our downwind turn, it's just a normal circuit. Be aware of the differences between high wing and low wing aircraft with visibility. This can influence your lookout. Being aware of these differences is practical threat and error management. If the wind velocity and circuit in use is known, it is possible, if you ensure there's no conflict, to join directly onto a circuit leg, in this case, a right hand base leg. You can join without the standard overhead procedure. You've got to ensure that there's no conflict 
with any existing circuit traffic and you can join downwind, you can join base and you can join final. The right of way rules do apply though. Circuit traffic has right of way. Basic airmanship, get your eyes outside. Remember yield, don't push. Be prepared to say I'll go number two. And just imagine that it's your son, daughter, husband or wife learning to fly in that other aircraft. You wouldn't want them to be cut off. So give way. So you don't necessarily have to join the runway that's already in use. It might be a CPL student out practicing crosswinds that you're not comfortable with. You are allowed to join for another runway, but you need to communicate and you need to sequence so you don't cause a conflict with the existing traffic. Agricultural aircraft and rotary traffic may operate outside of the standard circuit. Keep a good lookout. There may be some situations where it's not suitable to do an overhead join. Cloud may prohibit us from being the correct height above the aerodrome for the join. There's other operational factors as well. Gliders under tow winch may prevent us being in the overhead or parachuting. It's actually unsafe for us to be there. If you ever become unclear or uncertain about what's going on, vacate the aerodrome area. Keep your wings level, have a think, come back. It may be safer for you to then join directly onto a circuit leg. The standard overhead join isn't just a training manoeuvre and it's not just for student pilots. It's a procedure for everyone to aid in everyone's safety. We use it to evaluate the threats. It creates a situational awareness for us as pilots of the aerodrome, of the traffic, of the circuit direction. It gives us a chance to assess the wind. We do this to build a bigger, better picture in our heads of what's going on. That's good airmanship. That's what's going to allow us to make good decisions.